The skeleton, this is video three, the final video, and it's covering joints. So what are joints? Well, a joint is where two or more bones meet. So there are three types of joints and they're named or classed according to how much they can move. So the level of movement. So there are immovable joints, then there's slightly movable joints and then freely movable joints. Immovable joints, they're found in the skull. The skull is actually made up of many bones, but those bones have fused together, so there's no movement. Slightly movable joints are where the bones have limited movement in relation to each other. For example, in the vertebral column, each of those vertebrae can move a little in relation to each other. Freely movable joints are also known as synovial joints, and specific examples are hinge joints, for example, at your elbow and your knee, and then ball and socket joints, for example, your hip and your shoulder. A synovial joint has some key features. It has a joint capsule, which is a tough fibrous layer that surrounds the bones in the joint. So this joint capsule is sort of enclosing the joint. Then you have the synovial membrane just inside that and it secretes that fluid, synovial fluid. And the ends of the bones in a synovial joint are always covered in cartilage. As part of our course, we have to know one synovial joint in detail and I think the knee is easiest to learn. So before we go into the specifics of the joint, let's just go through this diagram. So the tendon is what attaches the muscle to the bone. It's not really part of the joint, but it could appear in a diagram. The first true label associated with the synovial joint is a ligament and a ligament attaches or connects bone to bone. So that's really important. And if you're doing ordinary level and you look at the ordinary level papers, every time you've been asked to label a synovial joint, one of the key labels they looked for was a ligament. Covering the ends of the bones is cartilage and cartilage is made of those protein fibres and is very flexible. So it's there for protection because it absorbs shock and it stops the bones hitting off each other and chipping. So it allows for the friction free movement of the bones. So if you're asked about the role of cartilage, it's not enough in your exams simply to state protection. You must elaborate and give examples of how it allows the friction free movement of the bones. So lining the joint is this synovial membrane and it secretes this really important liquid synovial fluid. So this synovial fluid is extremely important. It lubricates the joint, it reduces friction, so it's protecting as well. And it's also supplying nutrients to the cartilage. So you could be asked to draw and label a synovial joint in your exams. So bear in mind that when you look through the exam papers, this hasn't appeared for quite a number of years, so you never know. So I would practice drawing this diagram. I think this is easier than the previous diagram. Just make sure you put in all the key labels. So we have the bones there, then we have the cartilage at the ends of the bones. Then we have the ligaments, which are connecting bone to bone at the joint. The joint capsule there is encapsulating the joint. Then inside that, the synovial membrane, which secretes the synovial fluid. Then we have the synovial fluid, which is lubricating the joint, absorbs shock and is also delivering nutrients to the cartilage. Attached to the bones of the skeleton is skeletal muscle and we know that one of the functions of the skeleton is movement and the skeleton can only move because of the skeletal muscle and the reason for this is that skeletal muscle is contractile meaning it can contract. Antagonistic muscles are pairs of muscles that have opposite actions. So when one is contracting, the other is relaxing and your biceps and triceps would be antagonistic pairs of muscles. So when the biceps contract, the arm is pulled upwards and at the same time, the triceps are relaxed. And then it's the opposite. When the triceps contract, the biceps relax and the arm is lowered. So finally, we have to give a musculoskeletal disorder and our disorder that we discuss is arthritis, but it's a particular version of arthritis or type of arthritis. It's osteoarthritis and it's caused by wear and tear of the joints. So the cartilage at the ends of the bones wears away and becomes damaged and the symptoms are joint stiffness, swelling and pain. The prevention, well, sometimes there's no way to prevent it, but a good diet and exercising correctly, for example, running on soft grounds helps. So it helps to protect your cartilage. Uh, the treatment is pain relief, you know, generally anti-inflammatory medication, but eventually if it gets too bad, a joint replacement is the only solution. There is another type of arthritis. It's called rheumatoid arthritis and that's an autoimmune disease. So at the end of this video, what should you know? You should be able to list the three groups of joints and give examples of each. 
detail what a synovial joint is. So draw it, label it and discuss each of the labels and bear in mind that that has not been examined for a quite a long time at higher level. So be able to state what antagonistic muscles are and give the examples of the biceps and triceps and how they work and then outline osteoarthritis, that musculoskeletal disorder. State what causes it, what the symptoms are and how you treat it. So best of luck. Hope everything is going well. It's really important to write your own notes. I know I keep saying that but there's lots of research that writing notes, drawing diagrams helps all of the information go into your brain. So best of luck. Hope everything is going well.